Always loved basketball. Basketball is my favorite sport. Pretty good at basketball. I played since eighth grade. Mm -hmm. Yeah, son of a gun. Okay. Anyways, that was supposed to go in. But it was my favorite sport, and I would wake up every morning, um, like 6 a.m., and play like all day till dinner time, and just practice, 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 so I could become like the all star and a junior rec team. So, uh, Utah Jazz is the GOAT, uh, greatest of all time in my opinion. I really like the uh, Jazz, and I've always been interested in it ever since I was in eighth grade. Uh, so, uh, I'm gonna be talking about their prime season, which was in 1996-1997. And uh, what I'm gonna be talking about is I'm gonna have you meet the team a little bit, see what's behind the Utah Jazz in 1996-1997 along with the season and end off with the 1997 finals. And this is just the logo from 1996-2003, which is pretty cool. Uh, their, all their logos were always super awesome. Okay. So, uh, they were 64-18 to 18 record, number one in Western Conference. What that means is that they won 64 games, lost 18 games. They were number one in the Western Conference. There's the Western and then there's the Eastern Conference. And uh, according to Taylor Phil, a writer for Sports Illustrated, he said during this regular season, Utah cast a shadow over the rest of the Western Conference, finishing with a 64 to 18 record, the best in the franchise 23 year history and second best in the NBA this season. Carl Malone, this guy right here, he's a cool cat. Uh, he was uh, one of the team leaders for the Jazz. He is a two-time MVP and a two-time All-Star MVP, along with a bunch of other uh, awards the list could go on. Um, uh, hence why his nickname is The Mailman, along with his catchphrase, The Mailman Always Delivers. Uh, he, he was one of the most essential, he was one of the essentials to the Utah Jazz, which I really like him. Uh, next is John Stockton, this little dude on the left. Uh, number 12, he was another important member of the team, and according to the editors of ESPN, Stockton achieved 19,711 points and made it to the Hall of Fame. So these two were very important uh, team uh, leaders to the team, but uh, let's not forget about uh, the rest of the uh, Utah Jazz in 1996, 1997. They all played hand in hand into having a really great season. Uh, and hence, moving on to the season. This was the best the Utah Jazz have ever had. And um, he was in, uh, sorry. As mentioned earlier, the Utah Jazz has 64 to 18 record uh, during the regular season. And again, according to Taylor Phil, uh, he said, in fact, in the last nine years, the Jazz has won at least 51 games in every season but one, 1992 to 1993, uh, when it slipped to 47 win to 35 loss. Uh, Massed the three Midwest Divisions titles and made three tips to the conference finals. It's pretty sick. Uh, to have a good season, you got to have a good coach. Jerry Sloan, this little guy in the middle, uh, he uh, was also an NBA player before he, was in, he started coaching. He played for the Baltimore Bullets, which is now later named as the Washington Wizards. And then he later on went into the Chicago Bulls in 1994. Um, uh, according to NBA Commissioner David Stern, he was the commissioner from 1984 to 2014, he referred to Sloan as one of the greatest and most respected coaches in NBA history. Uh, and that just goes to show that he was just an amazing coach. Uh, and unfortunately, he passed away last year in May 22nd, but made his legacy as well. Let's right, move on to the 1997 finals. Uh, the road to the playoffs seemed pretty easy, but facing the 96-97 Chicago Bulls in the finals was no joke. Uh, while the Jazz were breezing through the Western Conference, so were the Chicago Bulls in the Eastern Conference. You can see that during this time, Michael Jordan was playing. He was leading the team. Many of them consider him as one of the greatest basketball players of all time. And uh, he was leading the team with a 69-13 record. So compared to the Jazz, they thought that was pretty cute. Uh, the Jazz, the beginning of the finals, versus uh, one and two of the games, uh, it was a rough start for them. Luckily, they would soon make a short comeback and tie with the Bulls uh, two to two. Uh, there are seven games in the finals, so there's four games that just went on just barely. 
And towards the end of the finals, the last game, which was on June 13, 1997, uh, it was nail biting. Uh, the Jazz, they were, uh, the score was three to two. And if they won, they would have tied the series and would have had another game. But if the Chicago Bulls won, they would have won the series. And um, according to the editors of NBA.com, with the clock ticking under 10 seconds and the game tied at 86, 86 to 86, Michael Jordan drove the left side of the court and found himself double teamed, which is when two team members kind of uh, from the opposite team kind of just circle you kind of thing. And it's kind of hard to just pass it and shoot it. So, but luckily he drove to the left side of the court and found himself double teamed by Brian Russell and John Stockton. And after a pump fake and a step through, Jordan passed to a wide open Steve Kerr, which is the coach of the uh, Golden State Warriors. He hit a 17-footer to give the Chicago, Chicago Bulls their fifth championship of the Jordan era. The Jazz lost, which is unfortunate. But even though Jazz fans were heartbroken, uh, many were pleased with the eventful year they were able to experience. So looking back at what was mentioned earlier through these past few minutes, the Jazz have worked tirelessly to win an NBA championship. championship. They came close, but never achieved that goal. And to restate, I have a big interest in the Utah Jazz, especially the 1996 to 1997 season, their prime season. The team, the season, and the finals were significant in knowing about how the Utah Jazz were doing that, during that time period. And to tie this back to me, even uh, I can't compare to the Utah Jazz, even though I practiced day and night in eighth grade. But uh, I know as my eighth grade self would say, for like every situation, all is life. And that's the way going, but thank you.